Hey everybody, this is John for MTG Nexus. Doing a little bit more modern here today as opposed to Pioneer. Today we're working on the Burn Mirror Versus series. So for a while I've been doing uh, on and off uh, Burn versus other decks in the format. A lot of people have been asking for the Burn Mirror match. This one was a little bit trickier because I actually had to own the entire Burn deck in order to do this because of the way Mana Traders works. I can only borrow like four of each card. So. Anywho, so it took a little bit while for this one to occur, but today we're kind of taking a look at um, exactly how much does having anti-mirror tech uh, affect the mirror match. So the deck we'll be playing on this, from this perspective, will be uh, pretty much the most anti-burn burn deck you can get outside of running something like Leyline. Four copies of Core Firewalker in the sideboard as long as copies of Path to Exile to deal with uh, posing core firewalkers and then beyond that you kind of have your standard Boros list here. Not a whole lot of hype around it. You have four copies of Sun Canyon, one Fiery Islet, so mana base isn't particularly tuned for the main for the mirror match, especially with the fifth copy of a Horizon land, but beyond that you got nothing too special here. Pretty much four ofs across the board, 20 lands, four of everything. So Pretty standard Boros list, nothing too skewed against or for the mirror other than there's no skull cracks in the main. And then the four core firewalkers in the sideboard. So basically in sideboarding you'll be bringing in the four core firewalkers, the four skull cracks, and some number of pass, and then you'll be cutting some number of Boros charms, Eidolons, and uh, a couple copies of, I believe it ends up being either Skewer, the Critics, or Rift Bolt. Um, could cut Lava Spike as well, but I don't like to go too far down on one-drop spells. So, as far as Eidolon, this is kind of the greatest contention um, as far as the mirror match. Some people like to leave it in the mirror match. Um, to me, Eidolon is good in one specific scenario. It's usually good in the situation where you're on the play and you're ahead on the board. Beyond that, Eidolon is terrible. It's a bad card. Um, specifically when you are behind. Um, it costs you life to play your spells, it costs you... Uh, it's not very good at blocking, especially Swift Spears, so a lot of issues with playing Eidolon in the matchup, so I just tend to completely cut the card in sideboarding, and I've done that for this deck, and I do believe my opponent will be doing it on the other side as well. Uh, that said, um, it's still a card you have to uh, be able to account for if your opponent leaves it in, because a lot of people like to leave it in the burn mirror. Um, like I said, if it gets to the point where you're behind at any point, this card is terrible, and the burn mirror can be very swingy. Um, you know, this is, card is great in matchups where you can get ahead and stay ahead, or if your opponent has to resolve multiple spells in one turn to win. You know, things like Storm, things like the Emery decks... Uh, previously things like KCI, etc. Um, even against control decks, Eidolon is a must kill for them to ena enact their game plan most of the time. But in the Murn Mirror, it's also a must kill, but it can also come back to bite you tremendously. So the more, basically, the more aggressive your opponent is at damaging your life total, the less useful Eidolon is. I mean, there are some rare circumstances with aggressive, like, combo decks, like Infect, where they generally don't pressure your life total a lot, where Eidolon's still fine. But in a lot of the, uh, Aggressive mirror matches, especially uh, the Burn Mirror and the uh, Ether Vile decks, I tend to take Eidolon out. Anyways, on to the deck tech for the other build, and on to the matches. This is the list we're using basically over on the other channel to do our uh, infinite. Trying to go infinite challenge, which admittedly hasn't gotten off to a great start so far. But I don't think that's any part of the deck. I think it's just been a couple corn case scenarios where things haven't gone quite well. Point being, this is this deck is very similar to what is going on with the anti burn deck, anti burn mirror deck. Um, the main difference with this build is there's only one one less copy of Horizon Lands. There's no Fiery Islet in this list, and we've shaved a Searing Blaze and a. Uh, I guess we just hit a Searing, Searing Blaze and a land for two copies of Skull Crack in the main. Um, main thing with this is there used to be a Grim Lava Mancer in this style of build, but I've just found Grim, especially without the presence of Stoneforge Mystic as much as I expected. Grim isn't quite as good as I expected it to be in the format, 
and so only main difference is there's two skull crocs in the main so a little bit more anti-life gain stuff for like main deck lightning helixes beyond that the main decks are pretty similar uh, not a whole lot of difference one less searing blaze could be relevant in some spots uh, having a two for one have to go one for one as opposed to getting a two for one against a creature is fine mainly because burns creatures are usually the key to it stealing a damage so not a huge deal uh, sideboard, a um, little bit heavy on Path to Exile in this particular build, so it's one thing to notice. Um, whenever we're sideboarding against the Burn Mirror, it's probably just going to be two copies of Path and two copies of Skullcrack. Could potentially bring in Searing Blood, but a lot of times this card could get stuck in your hand. Um, sometimes it's not even capable of killing Swift Spear. And also, side note, knowing that I board out Eidolons, um, there would be less targets anyway but opponent doesn't necessarily know that what exactly my sideboard plan would be. Um, no Eidolon, or no Corefire Walkers in this build, so there's no like truly dedicated anti-burn stuff, or anti-mirror match burn stuff in the sideboard. And so, we'll see what happens. Is Core Firewalker really that important in the matchup, or is there kind of a, is it kind of a dumb luck thing, um, as some people like to say sometimes about the burn, about mirror matches. Uh, burn mirror matches generally are somewhat skill intensive, but they're also top deck intensive. As a friendly reminder before we get into the video, or before we get into the matches, if you like what you're seeing on the channel, please consider subscribing, giving a thumbs up, leaving a constructive comment down below, especially if you like this kind of style of video for modern burn. Um, as you've been noticing, there's been a lot more Pioneer content on the channel, and we will be getting back to that in the next video, most likely. Um, next video will probably be, I think the decks on tap are blue-white spirits versus green-black delirium and then we'll probably get into another uh, another pioneer burn or another pioneer red aggressive league I think there was a prowess deck that uh, canister top 5 owed with um, also there's a legacy video coming out sometime in the next several days and also another uh, we'll be continuing the regular modern burn content with the trying to go infinite challenge hopefully that'll turn around a little bit here as we've had some unfortunate experiences with that so if you like modern burn content we're not going to be doing away with that at all we're still going to continue doing that and if you like our pioneer content don't worry we got some more coming for you over the next couple of days anyways on to the matches back here for match number one we're on the draw unfortunately on this hand is reasonable in the mirror match but also uh, can be a bit of a problem So the two main problems with this hand is there's no one mana interaction for a creature, and we're on the draw. The second is the hand is very potentially painful, with two shock lands and a fetch. So that said, we're going to keep this hand's fine in the mirror match, but if our opponent has a fast start, like a one drop into an Eidolon, opponent leads on Sunbake Canyon, which generally means that they're going to be light on... Um, lands especially in the burn mirror match you're not going to lead on that land unless it's your only one uh here our only plays are swiss spear and lava spike and obviously swiss spear is better to get down here opponent attacks and then uses skewer the critics to kill our guy so opponent appears to be trapped on lands which means their hands all gas so the two play play lines here are either searing blaze their guy or get eidolon down once again, as I've stressed about Eidolon, you want to be ahead or whatever. Because if our opponent were to bolt the Eidolon and then get in for two, you know, we're really not getting ahead. Uh, we go ahead and deal with their, with their Swiss Spear here. They draw the second land, have a Swiss Spear, have a bolt. That would actually have been a pretty devastating turn if we just would have Eidolon there, because then we would have gotten smacked for four. And we go ahead and Searing Blaze here. Once again, still not deploying Eidolon. Opponent has a handful of spells. They go ahead and Helix us. This is probably one of the swingiest cards in the matchup. Uh, basically, completely negates a Lightning Bolt in and of itself. So it's, it's almost a two for one in the mirror match. Um, unfortunately, we have an Eidolon in play now. Opponent does the thing. They go ahead and Blaze it. Put us to four. I guess they just didn't want to take the damage from the, uh, put ourselves to three there. Um, there is a danger that we die to Lightning Bolt, um, but that was 
specifically the only card our opponent could have here. And with Boros Charm, we get to untap and kill them. So it's possible I should have waited just till I drew for the turn that I would have been able to kill them anyway. But that's something to consider is uh, Lightning Helix is basically a two for one in the matchup. Um, always be mindful when you're dropping Eidolon, even if you leave it in in the post-board games. Um, there's a lot of spots where it's actually more harmful than good to, to drop Eidolon. Um, your opponent can literally lock you out of the game. Um, it's one of the more difficult situations like where your opponent can lock you out of the game because you can't like interact with their burn spells usually most of the time. So um, Another card people like to see in the mirror match is Deflecting Palm. And there are a lot of spots where it being essentially a two for one is really good. Like it negates their burn spell, deals them damage. Um, so that'd be another card to consider if you really wanted some uh, anti burn tech that isn't Core Firewalker. Um, Core Firewalker is really a kind of a limited card. It's good in the mirror, it's good against Gobos, it's good against. Uh, so maybe some other red based decks like uh, Prison they could potentially be okay against, like kind of negating their sweepers and such. But um, a lot of spots, Core Firewalker is a very narrow card, and it's only specifically for the mirror. Anyways, let's get into briefly covering sideboarding into game number two. Back here for quick sideboarding before game number two, as I mentioned the deck tech. Out for Boros Charm, out four copies of Eidolon, out two copies of Skewer the Critics, could have make an argument for Lava Spike there, um, but I want to keep our one main account, uh, spells kind of high, uh, in two path, in four Skull Crack, in four Cor Core Firewalker, want to be able to fight through opposing Core Firewalkers and Lightning Helixes in the mirror match, because life gain can be a real swing, want to be able to kill uh, Core Firewalkers with Path to Exile, and then uh, obviously Core Firewalker, while well, it does strain our mana a bit to get double white, it is a very key card in the mirror match. This hand's pretty decent, especially on the draw. Um, missing one white source for the Core Firewalker. Uh, beyond that, the hand itself's pretty decent. Uh, Rift Bolts can answer creatures potentially. Goblin Guide on one. Um, the only thing we're missing is like a boulder or a path, but overall should be pretty decent. Opponent leads on Swiss Beer. Kind of a painless land here. So we have to shock in here, unfortunately. Go ahead and lead on Goblin Guide. I think this might have been a mistake. I think we were supposed to actually lead on Rift Bolt to be able to answer uh, Swiss Spear here. Opponent does the Blaze thing, gets in for a bunch of damage. We have to deal ourselves another point of damage to get this core Firewalker down. Opponent goes ahead and fetches for, or goes ahead and suspends the Rift Bolt. We play a Lava Spike here. They don't seem to have a Skull Crack. We play a Skewer of the Critics. Once again, could be going after their creature, but with the advantage we're getting here with uh, Firewalker, we should be fine. Opponent connects on Rift Bolt, bolts us, spikes us, and Lava spikes us. So, <laughs> despite um, despite gaining an insane amount of life from Core Firewalker, we just died. I mean, we were at, what, 11, and our opponents, all of our spells were basically reduced by one. These were basically all shocks, and they still killed us. <laughs> um, that said, uh, the downside of the extra damage to, to cast Core Firewalker is real. Um, you know, if you notice, we had to tap the Sunmay Canyon, we had to fetch for, or play the Sacred Foundry. So, there is a cost to playing Core Firewalker, but admittedly our, our opponent's dr draw was a little bit insane. But, uh, sometimes that's mirror matches, Matt. Just nothing you can do about it sometimes. Anyways, on to game number three. Back for game number three, we're on the draw. Or on the play, actually, this time. Uh, seems reasonable. Uh, the one big glaring weakness of it is there is no real good interaction for creatures here. I still think this is a keep. Um, Swiss Spear into a couple of spells on turn one is pretty nice. On turn two, three inspiring vantages. Our land base isn't dealing us any damage. Opponent suspends a Rift Bolt and passes. We get to get in a bunch of damage here. Put our opponent to nine. They Rift Bolt our guy. They pass. We put them to six. Probably should have played Sun Bay Canyon there. One small mistake. Um, 
play the canyon, go ahead and pass the lightning helix us. Makes the game a little bit more difficult here. Draw another land. They bolt us. They spike us. They skewer us. See a goblin god here. Go ahead and play a couple of creatures. Opponent pass one of our guys. Sure. Goes to five. They go ahead and cast a swift spear. Play a Boros charm. We path it. So, if we ever draw a spell here, which should be pretty good, we draw a Searing Blaze, which is like the worst possible spell. It gets a land off this. Because then spikes us, and then Skull cracks us. So, a little bit of a risk there that, um, you know, we could have had a Lightning Helix or something from our opponent's side, but at that point, we'd bricked on so many draws. Um, you know... We had them, what, down to five at one point or something, and then worked on, like, two or three draws, even with the redraws from the lands. So, flood out's a real thing, even in a 19 or 20 land deck with four canyon lands. Um, happens a little bit less frequently in burn than it used to, um, but sometimes flood out happens, and I don't know if there's anything we really could have done differently there. Um, the cards just didn't quite line up quite right, and unfortunately sometimes that's how you lose in the mirror match. So, anyways, on to game number two, or uh, into match number two of this mirror match testing. So we're back here for match two, game number one, on the play. Uh, unfortunately, no lander is a pretty easy mulligan uh, into another no lander. So how do we go from flooding out to no lands to no lands. Magic sometimes. Anyways, keep us hand. Uh, probably bottom a land and an Eidolon. Um, even on the play, you really don't want double Eidolon, especially if your opponent leads on one drop, which of course they do. Show us Bolt off of the Eidolon trigger. We play Eidolon. It's probably incorrect to do that there. Um, probably should have bolted the Goblin Guide, but here. Go ahead and trade off. It did two damage. Uh, suspend the Roof Bolt and pass. Uh, opponent goes to attack here. We let them attack. We go ahead and bolt their thing. Which might have been incorrect in retrospect, but uh, we're not going to have a land to trigger that Searing Blaze, and we really can't afford to take another bunch of damage from the Eidolon. Now, here we're seeing the issues with the Pain Lands in the Mirror Match. Uh, both of us are taking damage to be able to cast spells, especially on our side when we basically only have the two lands. Now we're not in this bad shape. It was actually a mistake to play that land there because... might have been a mistake to play that land here because of Searing Blaze. Though we do have no guarantee that our opponent will ever actually cast a creature. And we're just dead anyway. So, Mulligan to 5. We really didn't have the resources to leverage to kill them. Um, we were still close. Uh, they were basically at a virtual 4 here. But, once again, mirror match comes down to a lot of little factors. Um, sometimes the sideboard matters, sometimes it doesn't, etc. So, anyways, on to game number two. Once again, sideboard is the same in the first couple of matches, or as the first match. So, this hand, um, quite interesting. Uh... We're one white source away from Triple Core Firewalker, which seems quite inviting. A couple of bolts to get us to the that point, so I think we keep his hand. We're going to go Swift Spear, attacks, we go ahead and bolt it away. Just trying to preserve our life total at this point. Um, might be the wrong uh, decision to make in the mirror match, but we have a Swift Spear attack here into that. When it sends one of the roof bolts at our creature, sends the other one at our face. Lava spikes us, bolts us. Once again, we lava spike. Still kept a bolt around for their creature. Having to go to eight here, which is a little bit dangerous, but then we play Firewalker. Opponent has no response. They play Swift Spear. We play another core Firewalker. Start getting aggressive a little bit here. 
one is fetching, goes to attacks, or blocks. This is a key trick in the uh, mirror match here. If I only had one firewalker, I probably still would have had to block because uh, damage prevention is a thing. What our opponent's going to be doing here is they're going to be skull cracking. Um, doesn't mean this, they necessarily have skull crack, but usually the only time you're attacking into an, a firewalker is either you have path to exile or uh, skull crack. Uh, the damage prevention ability will render the protection from red, null, and void, killing our core firewalker. We're still in good shape here, though, as we gain two life off of that. We're not taking damage from the uh, Swiss Spear. They take the opportunity there to lava spike us. Um, didn't really miss any damage because I think they figured we'd block anyway. We get to untap and play another core firewalker. Um, so can still continue to attack to try to end this game a little bit. We'll play as a goblin god and passes. Oh, now we're kind of sitting here in no man's land. We play skewer the critics to gain some life. Kill one of their guys. Start attacking in a little bit. So once again, I did that to free up one of our core firewalkers, because then they could start chump attacking, get a little bit of damage in. Um, so even with this tremendous opening hand, we're still um, kind of in a close game. This lightning helix pretty much ends it, because that's game five if they don't have a skull crack right here. Um, definitely triple core firewalker is a insane opening hand. We did hit the second. Second white source, however, once again, it's a risk. We could have bri bricked on a white source as there is uh, three lands in our deck that don't produce white in the three basic mountains. And then there are, what, 40 non-land cards in the deck, so you only have 17 out of 50-some odds to actually hit the... or 16 out of some odds to actually hit uh, the second white source you need each draw step, so... Hands risky, but had a tremendous upside, especially since you have your hate card in the mirror match, and having three copies of it, kind of insane, because they do actually stack on like a lot of hate cards. Anyways, on game three, see if we can finally win a match. Back here for game number three, unfortunately we'll be on the draw, which is relevant in the mirror match. Ugh. I think this hand's got to be thrown back just on the basis of the three pain lands. And apparently I agree with myself. This hand isn't great in the mirror match, but it's better than the last hand, so we keep it. I do have a Lightning Helix and a Rift Bolt, both of which are relevant cards. Um, if this was a Skewer of the Critics, I still don't think it would be a good good card necessarily in this situation. Opponent suspends a Rift Bolt, we suspend a Rift Bolt. Opponent Helix is us, well they have the chance, because there's no risk of Skull Crack or anything. We could have followed suit, but we like to hold up Searing Blaze here. Opponent Helix is us again in response. Possible I wasn't supposed to crack that fetch. Especially since we have Searing Blaze, but also... Just these little little mistakes and little timing mistakes can be so relevant in the mirror match. You know, Bonum being able to hit us with a second Lightning Helix here, basically gaining 6 life. Cast a Swift Spear, cast a Lightning Helix of ourselves, get in for some damage here. Opponent immediately bolts it, Lava Spikes us. So, opponent either doesn't have the damage, so we could be at a virtual 3 if they wouldn't have killed our Swift Spear here, which is interesting. So we would have been dead, actually, if our opponent would have ignored our Swift Spear there. I guess they feared we were going to be able to kill them on the way back, and then... You know, they have Lightning Helix here. Obviously, we have a Skull Crack to prevent the life gain, but we're just dead anyway. Um, you know, the longer the game goes beyond turn 5-ish, usually the mirror match ends. It um, doesn't usually go a whole lot longer than turn 5. Um, and then once you get into the single digits, or like even around 10 or so, there's just the risk of dying over a one turn, like, say, Burnout. Much like uh, Burn decks like to employ against Death Shadow. Here it was just a matter of, you know, we basically had a dead card with a Searing Blaze in our hand, and then um, Skull Crack obviously is good in the matchup, but when you have this many pain lands, etc., it's possible I should have been 
aggressively cracking the Sun Bay Canyons for more action, but you don't want to be uh, risking that. And our opponent, despite not having core Firewalkers in their deck, um, three Lightning Helixes can go a long way towards winning the game, too. You, know, you see they're at eight. Um, they would be at two without those double uh, Lightning Helixes, and then the importance of not cracking that uh, one fetch lane there on the end step enable them to fire off a Lightning Helix without fear of a skull cracking them back. So little things in the mirror match can add up. Um, you much as some of these games will come down to Flood or, you know, Core Firewalkers or, you know, Nut nut Hands, even when we have a Core Firewalker in play. You know, sometimes it comes down to the little things, too. Like, our opponent being able to gain three life was probably relevant in this spot. They'd be at five, they wouldn't necessarily be able to fire off this Lightning Helix because they could die in response. So little things um, can change, very much change the course of the Burn Mirror matchup. Anyways, one more match to go in this mirror match. Unfortunately, we're on the draw this game. This hand is reasonable in the mirror match, but once again, double double Sacred Founder could be a little bit frustrating. Fetch a Sacred Founder of their own, which indicates they probably have a Landline hand. Reveal Searing Blaze. We play that Inspiring Vantage just to get things going here with an idol on so they're a little bit ahead on board we're able to go land here but we're taking three damage to be able to kill an idol on and our opponent still has a goblin guide in play could leave the goblin guide back but there's a decent chance they'll just be able to clear it out of the way anyway into a lightning helix to kill it Once again, this is why I say Eidolon's not good in the mirror match. Um, it often gets answered only at the cost of two life. Um, we Lightning Helix 1, go ahead and suspend a Rift Bolt. Opponent just has... Oh, and gets the idol on us here, unfortunately, which limits the amount of spells we can cast. Play a bunch of guys, suspend the Rift Bolt. I go ahead and do this here um, to get the third one out, mainly because I don't think we're going to win the game either way, but the only thing that one life makes a difference on anyway is a copy of Searing Blaze without Landfall, but I think here it was justifiable to get the extra creature in play as a blocker, because um, a Swiss Spear, single Swiss Spear hit is going to kill us anyway, but our opponent just had enough resources to kill us, so once again damage from land base adding up um, having to shock in to get that uh, searing blaze to deal with their Eidolon um, you know as much as the burn mana base has gotten better over time there still is some issues with you know shocking in especially in the mirror match so be as mindful of your light total as you can while still being able to cast your spells very key thing in the mirror match lots of little different keys can all add up Sometimes it doesn't matter because somebody floods out or somebody has a god draw, but overall there are a lot of little things that can add up to just dying. So, anyways, on to game number two. On the play for game number two. Hands decent. Painful though, but decent. I think this hand's a keep. We have some interaction for our opponent's early creatures. A lot of burn spells to throw at their face. Uh, opponent mulligans to six. Go ahead and shock us in, unfortunately. Suspend Rift Bolt. Opponent goes a Swift Spear. It's important to kill the Swift Spear here just to avoid taking unnecessary damage. Suspend another Rift Bolt. Once again, we could potentially um, have played Lava Spike or yeah, Lava Spike here, but I think we want to save it for Skewer the Critics. Opponent also suspends a Rift Bolt. Go ahead and kill their guy. Go ahead and spike them. Skewer the Critics still holding up a bolt in case they have another creature going on over there. When it hits us with a Rift Bolt, hits us with a Lava Spike. It just kind of becomes a waiting game. They crack their land. Appears like they might be flooding a little bit. We draw a Core Firewalker at a good time. They go ahead and fire off, I'm guessing, a Boros Charm here. I actually missed an opportunity there. I should have actually cast Skewer the Critics to gain a life at this turn. Um, hopefully that doesn't come back to bite us here. 
play a swift spear, gain a life, go to combat, opponent goes to helix our thing. What was the point of me not skull cracking there? Guess I didn't want to prevent the life gain. Still seems a bit uh, sketch there. Once again, that skewer of the critics could have been cast last turn. The skull crack could have been cast this turn. Would have been a little bit higher on life total. We draw a lightning helix to bail us out, and not really a lot our opponent can do from there. So. Core Firewalker top decked at the right time was nice, but there was a little bit of uh, sequencing errors there on my part. Um, the skull crack shouldn't even have probably possibly still been in my hand, so um, was a bit of a risk going for the kill here with Lightning Helix. Um, our opponent could have had another Lightning Helix in response, but I don't think it's a huge deal because I still think with this Core Firewalker we're getting far enough ahead on life totals, and they're low enough on resources that they wouldn't be able to kill us with a couple of draw steps but still a little bit dangerous there to the sequencing was a little bit off um, sometimes you're able to overcome that but there was definitely some slight sequencing errors there anyways on to the next game We're here for the third and final game in our third and final match in this mirror match uh, this hand's decent um, does take a lot of damage from our lands though to be able to cast this core firewalker still think it's a, a keep but obviously dangerous has turn one to spend Rift Bolt. We play Got uh, Swiss Spear here. <laughs> Playing the Sacred Foundry because there is a chance we could just top deck uh, Inspiring Vantage and take a little bit less damage to cast this core Firewalker. Well, it takes this opportunity while we're tapped low to be able to Helix us uh, so we can't Skull Crack them back. We go to 12, we cast a core Firewalker, however. Just plays a land, we play a goblin guide. Now these are the situations where Core Firewalker just kind of starts taking over. Uh, Punt Boros Charms us down to nine. They skewer the critics, the goblin guide. Meanwhile, we're gaining life all the way. They're kind of in a losing situation here because each spell we play is gaining us life. Lightning Helix there while they're tapped out. And then just hit them down to one. And then the opponent just scoops it up. So, that was a situation where our opponent was not able to answer Core Firewalker onto, and we just kind of ran away with the game. Um, that is certainly what happens probably about 60% of the time with Core Firewalker in play. Um, otherwise, there are the, there's you know, there's a couple different scenarios you can play out with Firewalker. You can get a path. It can get the Skull Crack plus Creature Trick. Um, you can get hit with um, problems with uh, taking too much damage off your lands. So, Cork Firewalker is an a insanely good card in the mirror match. Four of them on the sideboard, obviously insane. But as you saw there, we lost two of three matches um, despite having it in our sideboard. So, the question becomes is it worth devoting that many sideboard slots to the mirror match um, gobos and maybe one or two other decks in the format uh, I don't know I don't think so I mean there are certainly some metas where there's enough burn mirrors going on that you want to do that the combination of that and lightning helix is a lot of times able to carry you through a lot of games but as you saw sequencing errors can be important um, flood out can be important etc so, lots of things to consider. Um, Core Firewalker, especially in a more greedy build of burn, like something like, you know, a Naya build with a green splash or something, I think is even more painful and not worth it. But I think in the Boros build, it might be worth a couple of slots if you're expecting a lot of the mirror match, either at your local game store or whatever event you're going to. So, Core Firewalker is definitely a card you can consider. Um, another card we might want to test sometime for the mirror match would be Deflecting Palm. Uh, see what kind of impact that particular card has. But beyond that, I want to give you guys a quick rundown of the mirror match. Things to look out for overall. Um, tighter play is necessary a lot in the mirror match. Um, you know what cards are important, etc. But hopefully, this guys will give you guys and gals will give you a better uh, 
indication of what cards are important in the mirror match and how the mirror match can go sometimes. Anyways, this has been John for MTG Nexus. Don't forget we'll also have some more Pioneer content coming out tomorrow. Should be Green Black Delirium versus Azorius Spirits. And then we'll have a modern content coming out with the uh, attempt to go infinite, so to speak. And then also should have a Legacy Burn video coming out here shortly. So anyways, if you like what you're seeing on the channel, please consider subscribing. Give us a thumbs up. Leave a constructive comment down below. I'll see you next time.